Welcome to the Financial Knowledge Network Money Smart Learning Series, Lesson Number 10, Your Own Home. In Your Own Home, we will explain the basic principles of home ownership and provide the information you need to help you understand the home buying process. We will explain your various mortgage options and help you understand how to manage the process of choosing the right mortgage for you. Ownership of a home is still considered the centerpiece of the American dream. And with the exception of the recent real estate bubble that has thrown values out the window, home ownership has been a fairly reliable way of building long-term wealth. Home ownership needs to be more carefully considered in today's economic climate. In your own home, we will explain the benefits of renting versus buying a home, identify the steps you must take to purchase a home, identify questions to ask when determining your readiness to purchase a home, explain the basic terminology used in the home buying process, and describe and explain the advantages and disadvantages of various mortgage options. Are you ready to buy a home? Use these questions to help you decide if you are ready to buy a home. Do I have a steady source of income? This usually means you have a job or other sources of income. Have I been employed on a regular basis for two or three years? Is my income reliable? Do I have a credit history? This refers to whether you have ever borrowed money for any purpose. Do I have a good record of paying bills? Will I be able to pay my bills and other debts? Do I have the ability to make the mortgage payment every month, plus handle additional costs for taxes, insurance, maintenance, and repairs? Do I have money saved for a down payment and closing costs? The down payment is the portion of the home's purchase price the buyer pays in cash. The more you have for a down payment, the less you will need to borrow. Some states offer first-time homebuyer assistance programs. Lenders prefer that you have 20% of the purchase price for a down payment. For example, 20% of a $100,000 mortgage is $20,000. However, there are many special programs that you can participate in that require a smaller or no down payment. Mortgage insurance protects the lender if you default on the loan. It is an additional cost of the mortgage. Closing costs are the charges related to transferring the ownership of the property. The lender must tell you what these costs are. If you answer yes to these questions, you might be ready to buy a home. You also should consider that you may need additional funds saved for emergencies, like possible repairs to the home that you buy. If you answer no to any of them, concentrate on strengthening those areas before you attempt to purchase a home. Let's compare the benefits of renting versus buying a home. Both renting and buying have their advantages. You will find calculators in our calculator menu that will help you calculate the best option for you. But here we will discuss different ways to consider your best option. Renting provides cost certainty by providing hassle-free living in regards to items such as property maintenance. You are also less obligated with property rental to the long term. Typically you are going to be committed to a year at a time. This can be advantageous with job transitions and give flexibility to move around more freely. You are also less likely to have home ownership related overhead, such as property taxes and homeowners insurance. The cost certainty on these items can offset the benefits of home ownership, especially in an unstable economic climate such as we are in now. On the other hand, home ownership offers several advantages and has been a consistently good investment in the United States for generations. Let's examine some of the benefits of home ownership. As you make payments, you build equity and can eventually borrow against that equity. Over time, the value of real estate will increase. You are the owner. It is yours. The interest you pay on your mortgage is tax deductible, and you can pass on ownership to other family members. How much mortgage can you afford? As a rule of thumb, many people estimate they are able to afford a mortgage of two to three times their household income. If your annual income is $49,200, you might be able to afford a mortgage of $98,400 to $147,600. Keep in mind that just because you qualify for that amount does not mean you can afford or be comfortable with those monthly payments. You need to consider your own circumstances and your future financial needs and goals. Lenders look at debt to income or DTI ratios when they consider an application or pre-qualification for a mortgage loan. A DTI ratio is your monthly expenses compared to your monthly gross income. Lenders consider monthly housing expenses as a percentage of income and total monthly debt as a percentage of income.
Both ratios are important factors in determining whether the lender will make the loan. Lenders usually require the PITI, that's the Principal Interest, Taxes and Insurance, or your housing expenses, to be less than or equal to 25 to 28 percent of your monthly gross income. Lenders call this the front-end ratio. Lenders usually require housing expenses plus long-term debt to be less than or equal to 33 to 36 percent of your monthly gross income. Lenders call this the back-end ratio. Long-term debt is outstanding debt with a remaining term of more than 10 or 11 months. It can include student loans, credit cards, car loans, and other non-housing expenses. If your debt-to-income exceeds these ratios, talk to your lender about your options. When you feel you are ready to buy a home, follow these steps. 1. Determine if you are ready to buy a house. Examine the criteria we have presented here and determine that home ownership is the right thing for you. Determine how much mortgage you can afford. Calculate your income times three, and this should be the maximum purchase price you can afford. 3. Determine which mortgage option is best for you. As a general rule, you should acquire a conventional mortgage with payments that include principal and interest and with a fixed rate of interest. Interest-only or adjustable rate mortgages are other options, but these are not going to be your best options in most normal circumstances. 4. The next step is to actually apply and qualify for a loan. Do this before you start negotiating for a home purchase. Knowing your available options for a purchase price will help you find the right house for you. And 5. Complete the purchase. Make an offer, have the house properly inspected, and complete the purchase through the settlement process. There are a number of different programs available for first-time home buyers. Many people start the home buying process with one of these programs or with the program offered by local community organizations. Be sure to ask your financial institution or mortgage counselor what options are available to you. Federal Housing Administration or FHA Insured Loans The 203B is the most common FHA loan, featuring low down payment, flexible qualifying guidelines, limited lender fees, and maximum loan amounts. Department of Veterans Administration or VA Insured Loans Features of VA loans include you must be an eligible veteran, no down payment requirements, competitive and negotiable fixed interest rates, limitations on closing costs, and longer payment terms. FNMA and Freddie Mac both offer many loan programs. The programs may include features such as low or no down payment requirements and options for borrowers with less than perfect credit. In addition, some programs are targeted for various groups, such as first-time home buyers, low to moderate income buyers, and teachers, firefighters, law enforcement officers, and health care workers. United States Department of Agriculture, or USDA Rural Development Housing Services. The USDA offers several loan programs for those seeking to purchase homes in rural areas. Two of the loan programs are the Section 502 Rural Housing Direct Loan, Features of this program include you must have low income, between 50 and 80 percent of the median income for the area in which you live. You must be unable to obtain financing elsewhere. The loan can be financed at 100 percent, and payments are usually 22 to 26 percent of your income. The Section 502 Single Family Housing Loan. Features of this program include you may earn up to 115 percent of the median income for the area in which you live. You must be unable to obtain credit elsewhere. You must be without adequate housing. You must be able to afford the payments. There's a 30-year term and no down payment. A typical home mortgage will be made up of four primary components, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Your principal and interest will be determined by the rate and term of the loan and the amount being financed. The insurance and taxes will be added to this amount and will be escrowed to be paid as needed. Whenever you are presented with an option to escrow these payments, we recommend taking that course. By adding them to your payment and having the funds escrowed, you are relieving yourself of the responsibility of having to administrate these payments. This is good for your peace of mind. Tax payments could be semi-annual and the insurance will most likely be an annual expense. Remember the four C's of decision-making for lenders. Capacity. Do I have the ability to pay the payment on time? Capital. 
Do I have the capital to be properly vested in the collateral? Character. Do I have the payment history to justify the loan? And collateral. Do I have the proper collateral? Pre-qualifying for a mortgage will greatly simplify the process of acquiring a home and take away the guesswork. By pre-qualifying, you will know how much house you can afford and will give you an idea of what type of houses you should be looking for. This is an informal process that will only give you a ballpark estimate. Do not confuse this with pre-approval. Pre-approval is an actual commitment by the lender to actually borrow you the money. A pre-approval lets you know how much money you are going to be able to borrow and will help you negotiate as you can offer an assurance to a seller that you are capable of completing the transaction. Mortgage Options Traditional Mortgage Conventional mortgages will require a down payment and will have a principal and interest component. These types of mortgages can have fixed rates of interest or adjustable rates of interest. In most situations, you should be getting a fixed rate of interest mortgage. This will eliminate the uncertainty of interest rate adjustments affecting your monthly payment. Interest-only mortgage. Unlike conventional mortgages, interest-only mortgage loans are mortgages in which only interest, not principal, is paid in the initial monthly payments. Then, after a specified period, depending on the loan, you will have to pay the entire principal balance in a lump sum, or you will begin to pay regular mortgage payments. Interest-only mortgages have a lower monthly payment, so borrowers can purchase a home that they might otherwise be unable to afford, especially in areas with high housing costs. Be very careful with these mortgages, because you may not pay down your principal. This mortgage payment may also increase over time, because very frequently the interest rate is adjustable. Additionally, the term may convert to a conventional mortgage, which requires both interest and principal payments. Bi-weekly payment mortgage. Bi-weekly payment mortgages are usually fixed rate conventional mortgages with payment due every two weeks. The borrowers can pay their mortgage faster because every year they pay 26 smaller bi-weekly payments instead of 12 monthly payments. Many borrowers who receive bi-weekly wages find this mortgage option a closer match to their spending plans. Because of the frequency of payment, lenders usually require direct bill payment from a bank or credit union account. Ask whether your lender offers a bi-weekly payment mortgage option. You might be able to achieve the same result by adding more money to your monthly payment. Generally, your lender will not charge you a fee for this option. However, check to ensure that your lender does not charge a prepayment penalty. Buying a home is one of the most complex transactions you will encounter in your life. Never rush the process. Always strive to acquire as much information as possible before making a decision. Remember that the decisions you make about lenders and rates will affect your payments for many years. It can be very hard to undo a mistake if you make one. The best thing to do is compare rates and make lenders compete for your business. Never assume you are getting the best deal without a quality comparison. You should also make sure you get a good faith estimate of the closing costs when you're choosing a lender. If a lender has a poor closing cost structure, you can increase your costs by several thousand dollars needlessly. Try to avoid this by getting full disclosure up front of all the closing costs before you select a lender. If you are trying to acquire a larger mortgage, there will be some special considerations you will have to make. Expect to work harder if the mortgage you are seeking is outside of what can be expected by documenting your income and expenses. Home Equity Loans and Home Equity Lines of Credit The traditional home equity loan is a one-time loan for a lump sum and typically at a fixed interest rate. The loan is repaid in equal monthly payments over a set period of time. A Home Equity Line of Credit HELOC, works like a credit card. You receive a line of credit from which you can draw money. As you repay the principal, your available credit goes up again, just like a credit card. Typically, the interest rate on a line of credit is variable, meaning that it is tied to an index and will change with movements in interest rates. Home equity products offer homeowners great flexibility to finance major expenses, including home improvements and college tuition. They usually have a lower interest rate than credit cards, and the interest often is tax deductible. Check with your tax advisor. The most important thing to remember is that your home is collateral for the loan.
If you run into repayment difficulties, you could lose your home. So before you put your home at risk, you should learn more about how these loans work and what can go wrong if they are not used carefully. With both types of home equity products, you also are at risk if there is a drop in the value of your home. Although the housing market has done extremely well in recent years, there is always a chance that real estate values will go down. HELOCs often come with extra low interest rates for an introductory period, such as six months, but these are variable rates that could go up during the life of the loan. When deciding whether a line of credit is right for you, ask yourself if you can afford the increased monthly payments after the introductory period ends or when interest rates rise. You will also have to decide if you are comfortable with a fluctuating monthly mortgage payment or whether a fixed interest rate and stable payments are better for you. Also remember that you are drawing out the money you have invested in your home, so you should think carefully about what you do with that money. It is generally best to invest in another asset of long-term value, such as a home renovation or college tuition, instead of paying for a car or a vacation. The flexibility these loans give you can be dangerous, because if you are not disciplined about how you use the funds, you could end up paying a lot of money over a long period of time for something you no longer own or that did not add any value to your existing assets. You have specific rights if you are using your home as security for a home equity loan or line of credit. Federal law gives you three business days after signing the loan papers to cancel the deal for any reason without penalty. You must cancel in writing. The lender also must return any fees or finance charges you had paid. This right does not apply if you are buying a home or refinancing without borrowing additional money.